Okay, we're going to look at our third transformation. So we'll graph transformations. We're going to look at the third transformation just now, which is what happens when you've got a graph y equals f of x and you then draw a graph minus f of x. So in other words, you put a minus in front of it, you times the graph to be minus 1. <clears throat> okay. Now what that does to a graph is it inverts it in the x-axis. So if you've got a graph like that, and that's y equals f of x, when you draw y equals minus f of x, it inverts it in the x-axis. Okay, now think about what changes there and what doesn't change. Well, if you think about... If I had a point there, and let's say that point was 3, 5, we can see that the x coordinate doesn't change, it's still 3, but what happens is we invert the 5, and that becomes minus 5. I've had a point here which was, say, 1, 1, then the x coordinate would stay the same, it's still as far along, it would still be 1, but we would invert the, one, the y coordinate 1, would become minus 1. So in essence, the x coordinate stays the same, the y coordinate is inverted. So what that means, the y coordinate of 10 would become minus 10, minus 4 would become 4, minus 7 would become 7, pi would become minus pi. Now the other crucial thing is the shape of the curve. The curve will be the same shape, but it's just been reflected across the x-axis. So it's not so much been turned upside down as reflected across this line here, which is the x-axis. And that's what happens when you transform y equals f of x to minus f of x. Okay, here's an example, and let's say that that's y equals f of x. We're going to draw y equals minus f of x. So. Let's do that thing again where we've got the original points and we've got the images. Okay, so the original points then start with, okay, 0 minus 4 and 2, 0, 4, 2, 5, 0 and 7, 3. So we now need to find the images of those. So minus f of x, what does that do again? Well, it reflects the thing across the x-axis. So what will change? Well, for example, 4, 2 will move down here. But what doesn't change is the x-coordinate. So it will still be 4. What happens is the y-coordinate becomes inverted. 2 will invert to minus 2, minus 4 will invert to 4. So the x-coordinate does not change in each case. So that's easy done. That's 0, 2, 4, 5, and 7. But we invert the y coordinates, minus 4 becomes 4, 0, you can't invert 0, that's still 0, 4, 2 becomes 4, minus 2, 5, 0, well, 0 still 0, and 3 becomes minus 3. Okay, so we can now plot in those images. So, 0, 4, mark it in, annotate it. 2, 0, well, 2, 0, you can't invert 0, that's still 0, so that sticks at the same point. 4, 2 now inverts to 4, minus 2. And let's annotate it, put that in. 5, 0 inverts to still 5, 0. And 7, 3 inverts to 7, minus 3. Okay, I could have taken a wee bit more. Okay, about the diagram, but there you go. So, then, go for the shape. Try and keep the shape the same, and that's not bad. Okay, so here's the second one. There's y equals f of x, and we're going to draw y equals minus f of x. So let's get the original points in the go. Minus 2, 0, 0, 3. There's images, so minus 2, 0, 0, 3, 1, 1 and 2, 4. Okay, so let's have a think about what changes, what doesn't. Okay, so 3 will reflect down to minus 3, 
y coordinate 1 down to minus 1 and the y coordinate 4 down to minus 4, 0 will stick at 0. What doesn't change is the x coordinates. Okay, so that's still going to be minus 2, 0, 1, and 2. And then I invert the y coordinates, 0, still 0, 3 inverts to minus 3, 1 inverts to minus 1, and 4 inverts to minus 4. Let's plug them in. So there's minus 2, 0, 0 minus 3, and then 1 minus 1, and then 2 minus 4. And then just carefully draw the thing in. That's not bad. Okay, now next transformation that we're going to look at is going from f of x to f of minus x, which is different. It's not f of x to minus f of x, it's f of x to f of minus x. The minus in front of the x in the bracket. Okay, so this transformation will result in a reflection across, well, not across the x-axis this time, but across the y-axis. Right, there's some hammer on that side, but I'm going to press ahead with this one. Right, so let's go with an example one this time. And we've got a point there, which is, let's see, 3, 2, and then a point, 5, 0, a point which is 7 minus 3, and then a point which is 8, 0. Okay, so let's put in the original points and images. Okay, so 3, 2, 5, 0, 7 minus 3, and 8, 0. Okay, so now what happens is we reflect across the y-axis. So the curve's going to move over here as opposed to reflecting across the x-axis. It's going to reflect across y. Now what that does is that then inverts not the y-coordinate, because if you think about it, if we reflect this across here, the height of the curve doesn't change, so the y-coordinate doesn't change. Same goes here. If we reflect across the y-axis, the y-coordinate doesn't change, it's the x-coordinate that changes. Now, what happens to the x-coordinate? It inverts. So 3 becomes minus 3, so it's minus 3, 2. 7 becomes minus 7, so that will be minus 7, minus 3. Five zero now becomes minus five zero and eight zero now becomes minus eight zero. And you need to visualize this as a reflection across the x axis. So let's have a go at that. So three two that's now reflecting to minus three two. Let me just extend this out a bit. Five zero is now reflecting to minus five zero. 8, 0 is now reflecting to minus 8, 0, and 7, minus 3 is now reflecting to minus 7, minus 3. Okay, and you need to think about the y-axis, if it's a mirror and this is a reflection, and it would look like this. Okay, so now you're going to try these ones. Okay, the first two, we're going to draw y equals minus f of x, so that's a reflection across the x-axis, and in question 3 and 4, the most recent ones, we're going to reflect them across the y-axis, because it's f of minus x, so have a go. Okay, 